Hi, I'm Tom Norris. Uh, welcome to my Chat Physics Live talk about introducing electromagnetic waves more meaningfully. So I'd invite you to just reflect for a moment on how you introduce electromagnetic waves in your teaching at GCSE or in your physics teaching more generally. Um, I kind of realised a few years ago that I wanted to make my teaching of electromagnetic waves more meaningful. I wanted to give students a more meaningful conception of what an electromagnetic wave physically is beyond just light waves you can't see because the frequency or wavelength is too high or too low. Um, my concern sometimes is that my teaching of electromagnetic waves was a bit surface in terms of students would learn the order, the uses, the dangers of each type of radiation, but did they actually know what a radio wave was? in any sense. Um, so I wanted to give them that deeper understanding that's more connected to the other areas of physics knowledge as well. However, of course, electromagnetic waves, how can we how can we develop a more meaningful conception of what that physically is, given that no one knows what that physically is, given quantum mechanics and wave particle duality and the dual nature of electromagnetic waves? So I think there is a really simple way. So I would encourage you, and this is what I do too, at GCSE, base your teaching around this classic, around the classical description of electromagnetic waves. So electromagnetic waves are oscillations in electric and magnetic fields, or the electromagnetic field, if you like, whichever you prefer. So in this talk, I want to share how I explain that to students, because that um, that description in in purple. Um, does take some some explaining, some unpacking to students, oscillations in electric and magnetic fields. Um, so I want to explain that. I want to share how I explain this and why I think this leads to perhaps a more deeper, more meaningful conception of electromagnetic waves. So just another quick thought on that quantum can of worms. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong at GCSE with painting an almost completely classical picture and basing your teaching kind of primarily or almost entirely on that. I mean, you can always still mention this isn't actually the full picture of what electromagnetic waves, what, what we think they are, or what we think they, how they behave and mention photons by all means. Um, this is exactly what we do at atomic structure in chemistry. Um, we teach a pretty much classical picture of protons, neutrons, orbiting electrons. Of course, they don't orbit in any sense of the word, we, we think. Um, but we still fall back on that completely kind of classical picture kind of in our teaching. And I think we can do the same in the electromagnetic waves topic. Um, and at QSage 5, uh, yeah, we teach the photon model as well. But I think the explanation, which I'll kind of share with you, does paint a clearer picture of the classical model to then contrast with the photon model. I've also used the explanation of electromagnetic waves at key stage three to explain what light is, and it seemed to work okay there as well. Okay, so here is a screenshot from a video that I used to quite like using to introduce electromagnetic waves because the just this 10 seconds of the video goes from a normal view of the room to what if you could see all of the electromagnetic waves passing through the walls and in through the windows. So that's your neighbor's Wi-Fi signal, local radio stations, the TV signal, light from the TV screen, um, infrared given off by every surface, of course. Um, but again, this, I realize this doesn't give a physically meaningful conception of what an electromagnetic waves are. There's just kind of invisible squiggles, which you can I've just, you can now see, but what actually are those? So that's what I want to get at. Sometimes the visible color spectrum is used to introduce electromagnetic waves. So Herschel's experiment, where thermometer D is outside the spectrum, but shows the highest temperature, and you can kind of get quite nice results on that. But again, this experiment just really shows that invisible light waves exist, so infrared waves exist, but this experiment doesn't really help show students what electromagnetic waves are beyond light that you can't see. So what is light? That's what I'm really getting at here. I'm going to kind of impart something. And these diagrams, kind of your standard electromagnetic waves diagrams, I don't think are helpful. I think they're too complicated. They need too much unpacking. They look too complex for students. They're on a 3D graph, which will be quite confusing for some students and kind of all the arrows and the idea of 
these arrows are showing electric field variation. I think that probably takes a bit of unpacking. I think there's I think there's a simpler way than showing these diagrams. I don't think these diagrams are helpful. So this is my aim. I want students to develop a more meaningful classical conception of what an electromagnetic wave physically is. So I want to share how I introduce that and how I unpack that pink statement. Look out for two aspects. I think this explanation connects nicely to other physics knowledge, other physics knowledge from the waves topic, also for magnetism and electricity. And I think visual aids are quite important for painting that classical picture of what we think electromagnetic waves are. OK, so. What do I hang this explanation all on? It's the idea that all waves are caused by oscillations. I think that's kind of fundamental. By the time you're introducing electromagnetic waves, students should be very familiar with that idea. We'll have seen animations and things like that. So they'll have already showed them the waves they've already studied, water waves, so concrete waves, waves they can actually see the oscillations. Water waves travel when the water surface oscillates. Mexican waves travel when people oscillate up and down in their seats. Seismic waves travel when parts of the Earth's crust mantle and core oscillates and they might study P waves and S waves. Sound travels when air particles oscillate. So if you put all those together and then think about electromagnetic waves, what is oscillating when electromagnetic waves travel? If all waves are caused by oscillations, then what is it that's oscillating when electromagnetic waves travel? And you, it's really simple actually. The answer is just electric and magnetic fields are what are oscillating when electromagnetic waves travel. So we need to unpack that for students as well. So what will help is that students will be familiar already, I'm sure, with what magnetic fields are. They'll be familiar with the idea that in the space around a magnet is an invisible magnetic field. They'll be familiar with the idea that the Earth has an invisible magnetic field all around it as well. So when you're walking across the surface of the Earth, you're walking through the Earth's magnetic field and it's there and you can detect it with a compass um, but it's invisible to us and they sh might also be familiar with the idea of an electric field, an invisible electric field which surrounds a Van de Graaff generator. They might have seen the effects of that electric field. Um, so we just extend that idea. We can say, OK, so when like all around us, um, we are on the surface of the Earth. And in fact, through the entire planet and all of space, we are walking through the Earth's electric and magnetic fields. And we can combine those two together. We just call them electromag the electromagnetic field is just the electric and magnetic fields kind of combined. Um, and normally, so here's the key bit. Normally, the electromagnetic field is kind of lovely and flat and still. So look at those field lines around the Earth. They're kind of that, they're kind of in that stable pattern. Um, but if the field lines were caused to wobble, like by nearby charged particles, if the charge, if the field lines were caused to oscillate, if nearby charged particles are oscillating, then that causes the entire field lines to oscillate and kind of a wave can travel along the field line. And that's what an electromagnetic wave is. So when the sun's giving out light, okay, there's an electromagnetic field between the sun and the earth, electric and magnetic fields. And normally they're lovely and flat. But when the sun's giving out light, it's making the electromagnetic field between the sun and the earth oscillate. And that's like kind of shaking one end of a sheet. And then the oscillations travel along that kind of sheet, except, of course, it's not a sheet. It's the invisible electric and magnetic field ripples in the invisible electromagnetic field. That's what the sun's light is. And of course, the ripples can have any frequency and any wavelength. So our eyes can only pick up some frequencies and some wavelengths. Um, so the ripples in the electromagnetic field, if they're very low frequency, then we call them radio waves and so on. And you can use the Jelly Baby Wave Machine to show this as well. So the Jelly Baby Wave Machine represents that electromagnetic field, which kind of is all around us. We're walking through it all the time. And the Jelly Baby Wave Machine, just like the electromagnetic field, starts off kind of normally lovely and flat and still. Um, but if something disturbs the Jelly Baby Wave Machine, then uh, a wave travels across it, just like if something disturbs the electromagnetic field, um, then an oscillation will travel through the electromagnetic field kind of across space, transferring energy across space. And there can be different wavelengths and different frequencies of 
at which the electromagnetic field can oscillate. So this is a really good use for the Jelly Baby Wave Machine. If you haven't seen this or made them before, there's a video in the PowerPoint. There'll be links at the end you can follow or access to the links at the end. Uh, but just Googling it as well. So you can, uh, there's lots of videos to show you where you can be shown how to make them, how to make a Jelly Baby Wave Machine uh, and how to use it. And I use it to model the electromagnetic field to show that the electromagnetic field is lovely and flat normally, uh, but oscillations can travel across it. And then this FET animation um, shows exactly the same thing. So that red line is like a single uh, electromagnetic field line, or electric field line or magnetic field line. And when a charged particle oscillates in the aerial, so up and down the aerial, then the field line is also caused to oscillate and the, uh, the wave travels across space. And that's what a radio wave is. It's an oscillation of the Earth's electric and magnetic fields that they can then be picked up at another aerial. And there's kind of quite a nice symmetry between showing these two kind of models kind of side by side showing that the electromagnetic field starts off lovely and flat, uh, but when it's caused to oscillate by oscillations of charged particles, the electromagnetic field transmits waves across it. And that's what these electromagnetic waves are. Um, you could also make a physical model of the same thing. Um, this is basically a ball on a stick with a rope attached. Uh, the ball represents perhaps the electron moving up and down the aerial, and of course the rope represents uh, an electromagnetic field line, which would be caused to oscillate if you oscillate the ball. And then finally, um, the FET radiating charges app, which unfortunately needed Flash Player to work. So I, I hope at some point they'll get around to updating it. But for now, there is a video of it being used. So this shows a charged particle like a proton and the electric field around it. So if students have already studied electric fields, show them this video of the applet now that the applet doesn't work on Flash. Um, when charged particles oscillate, the electric field lines around them also oscillate, sending out waves, oscillations in the electric field lines. That's what an, uh, that's what an electromagnetic wave is. It's an oscillation in the electric field lines. Um, so that's a really nice little animation just to illustrate that point. OK, so just to recap that explanation, what we've basically done is started with students' knowledge of more concrete waves, water waves, sound waves, earthquake waves, waves on a string. OK, they are all oscillations, oscillations of the string, oscillations of the Earth's crust, oscillations of any material for sound waves, oscillations of the water surface. You could group those together. They are mechanical waves because they are waves or oscillations or pulses of a material. But what we then introduced was we also said that waves could be oscillations of material, but they can also be oscillations or pulses or ripples of a force field. And that's what electromagnetic waves are. They're waves or oscillations or pulses or ripples in the invisible electromagnetic field or in electric and magnetic fields. OK, and it's really important here uh, that distinction between waves or oscillations of a material and waves are oscillations of a force field. So the field lines are oscillating. And then all of the electromagnetic waves are exactly the same thing, transverse oscillations of the electromagnetic field. And the only difference between them is their frequency and wavelength. What's quite nice is you could also tag on gravitational waves to that as well, because if waves, if all waves are either mechanical waves or waves or oscillations of a force field, well, gravitational fields, could they, gravitational field lines, can ripples travel along those as well? And yes, they can, that's gravitational waves. And we can link that really nicely, obviously, to that recent, recent exciting discovery. Um, so this sheet um, and others for electromagnetic waves is, is on my blog. Um, which you can you can access the addresses there, teachingphysicsuk.wordpress.com. Um, hopefully, that's given a little flavour of how I base my teaching about introducing electromagnetic waves around kind of that statement. Electromagnetic waves are oscillations in the electromagnetic field. But I think the important bit is 
what the useful bit, hopefully useful bit, is kind of how that explanation is built up kind of from their prior knowledge of what waves are oscillations and that knowledge of other more concrete waves that they can see. Okay, right, thank you very much for watching the talk. I hope it was useful. Um, hopefully I'll see you soon one day, perhaps Chat Physics 2022, that would be nice if, uh, for a live event. Okay, thank you very much for watching.